Okay, solving the trig equations. Step one, um, isolate. Okay, I don't need to do step one because this one is already isolated. So step two is figure out where you are. So when I do that, I'm using this. He was just walking there. Oh, yeah. I'm doing this and I'm asking myself, where am I? So, where is cos negative? On the left. Okay, and then remember what a reference angle is? It always is an angle that connects what? To the x axis. Okay, so don't, don't connect it to this. Okay, do you remember one very important thing I've told you for this unit? Don't do math with the negatives. Use the negatives for your location purpose. Okay? So we've actually already dealt with the negative. So now I'm going to cos inverse... 0.6428. Okay, are you going to remember that little rule? Don't do this math stuff with the negative. Because where did you put the negative? You put the negative in the location. <clears throat> okay, so calculator. I have to, I'm just double checking degrees. That's what I want. So second cos. 0.6428, that's what I'm typing. Okay, we, you were, remember this from that other unit, that to get angles, you're always gonna be pushing the second function button. So that's a 50 degrees. <clears throat> okay, so that will always tell me just how far off of the axis I am. Okay, what is your actual answer? Okay, so this angle is 50 degrees smaller than what amount? 180. So I'm going to go 180 minus. So this angle is 130 degrees. And do we know visually, does that make sense? 130 is, that quadrant has to be a number between 90 and 180, right? And then this angle is what? It's 180 plus the 50, right? You're bigger, so 230. Valley, I heard your other math and that one would work, but um, might not be yeah. on the other one. Yeah, in that case, yeah. <clears throat> okay. All right, and number three, ready? Step one, isolate if you need to, and I don't. It's ready, it's ready for me. So, step two, tell me the quadrants. So, using the Astica visual, where is tan of an angle a negative trig value. So I gave you that one little cheat sheet. Remember, sine is up down, cos is left right, and tan is looking at diagonals, right? S and C. And I'm already going to make sure I'm just going to connect it with the x axis. Okay, now I'm going to tan inverse, and what's the big idea to remember? Don't do the negative. We already put the negative in its drawing, so don't put negatives into the math stuff. Okay, so 20 degrees is a reference. Okay, so 
what's the actual answer? So this one, I'm 20 degrees smaller than 180. So does 160 make sense on the drawing? And how would I mathematically figure this one out? I'm 20, what? I'm 360 minus 20. I'm 20 smaller than 360. Okay, on your test, you can check your answers. Did you know that? For instance, what's the tan of 340? I can just type that in and then it equals negative 0.364. Oh, look at that. It worked. Okay, see, that's how I can just see. Is my answer right? <laughs> okay, the next page I'm going to add some stuff with you. Okay, now we got to tackle algebra. So step one says, get it alone. So that's where we hadn't done anything, but now we need to. So algebraically, what should I move first? So I'm going to, I heard the four. So I'm going to subtract four. And then I'm going to divide by two. Okay, that was step one. So algebra if needed. Now step two, where are you? Astica, where is sine positive? Is it positive a half? So did you pick the top two quadrants? Okay. Now step three is just what's the distance in this zone? What's the reference? So I need to get an N. And um, if you're a weird bracket calculator, make sure this, this would not be right. If somebody was trying to type and they typed that, it would not be good. So make sure just their typing is good. And, did you get 30? Yeah. The calculator should tell you 30. Okay, so, if I go 30 degrees up on here, I end up at 30. And if I go 30 degrees this direction, does it make sense I'm going less than 180? I think we can probably do this one with mental math. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to challenge your brain a little bit here. Because in grade 11, or in grade 12, you actually are going to do this solving completely without a calculator. You don't even get a calculator for this kind of stuff. So how would I ever do that? Does one half exist as a unit circle value? Do you recognize that number on our unit circle somewhere? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sine connects, connects us to what variable? X, Y, y R, y. y. Okay, if I'm gonna peek at my unit circle, where on here do I see Y values? of a half. That's a y value of a half. What angle am I at? 30. Where else do I see a y value of a half? Right here, which is 150. Mm. What's that? Okay, number five. Algebra. What kind of algebra am I doing? So, 
How many variables do I have? One or two variables? Um, sorry, I should rephrase that. How many types of variables do I have? One. Just one. I just have a cos theta. So I'm going to isolate. Okay? Do you remember this big sheet that I gave you last unit? Algebra. Do you have one variable or two variables? If you have one, you isolate. Okay, so how do I start? What do you want to move first? I usually start with my coses or my variable. Do you want to minus the seven cos or the four cos? I'm going to go with the smaller one. It's okay if you do the other way, but you're going to get negatives involved in there. But So three cos theta plus four equals three. Okay, keep isolating. So now I'm going to remove the four. And divide by three. Okay, so step one is the algebra piece. FYI, you can always think this. Back to last unit. This is your map of how to do algebra all the time. One variable, two variables. What do I have? Where do I go? Okay, now let's go into the trig mode. How do I start working with the trig stuff? What quadrant are we in? Cos negative. Cos negative. Did you pick the left? Okay, now I need a reference, so I'm going to cos inverse. What's important in my calculator? Yeah, you'll want to be in degree mode, and you'll also want to remember to do what? Not the negative. No, we put the negative into the location piece. So I'm going to go with one decimal place when I round the angles. 70.5. Okay, what are your two answers then? So this one is that you're smaller than 180, and this one is being bigger than 180. And again, if you actually want on your test, you could plug that in. You could go 7 times cos of 109.5 plus 4. 4 times cos of 109 plus 3, da, 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 and see if it equals each other. You can always check that. All right, number 6. Okay. Where am I going here? Do I have one variable or do I have two variable types? I have two variable types because I have a cos squared and a cos. What's my first thing? It makes sure it's zeroed out. Good. Then next, factor if you can. Do I recognize any of my factoring strategies? Do you see? Do you have simple complex trinomial? Do you have a GCF? Do you have a difference of squares? Do you recognize this style? Simple. Simple trinomial. So 
two brackets. <clears throat> What and what make cos squared theta? A cos theta and a cos theta make cos squared theta. Negative two plus one. Oh, I think your yes. plus minus is the other. So what and what make two? Two times one. One of them is negative. I need a plus one in the middle. Okay, now cos theta would have to be a negative two in that. <clears throat> this algebra is the exact same as last unit, except for instead of an x, I have other things going on, right? Cos theta equals one. Okay, um, <clears throat> I'm going to do this one first, if that's okay with you. <clears throat> you have to kind of treat these as completely two separate things. Okay, so cos is positive. Cos is positive <laughs> over there. And what does your calculator get you if you cos inverse 1? It gets you 0. Ooh, this is weird. 0. So here's my question. What happens if you go 0 degrees up? Where are you? 0. What if you go 0 degrees down? 360. So my drawing isn't really accurate. I'm actually just straight sideways. And there's my answers. <clears throat> also, I showed you this on the above question. Does the value of 1 actually exist on our circle somewhere? Yeah. yeah. What is cos? Which letter does cos? connect with x. Do you ever see an x value of 1? Right here, there's an x value of 1, so where are you? 0 and 360. Okay, so this is probably how you would start at this one. Cos is negative. And then I'm guessing we'll do this, cos inverse of a positive 2. And what happens? Error. So on this, for the angle, there's going to be no solution to what our angle is going to be. OK, so this is um, what's happening. So if I think back to my unit circle, cos is x. What's the smallest the x ever goes? Negative 1. What's the biggest? 1. Same with sine. Sine is y, the lowest y, the highest y. Okay. Tan doesn't have that rule. Tan won't follow that pattern. But look at this. Second cos of 0.998. That should work, because it's lower than 1. But if I second cos 1.02, that's bigger than 1, I'm guessing it's going to be a error. Okay, number 7. What's your algebra? What do you want to do to solve for tan theta? <clears throat> How do you get it alone? Square root. What's the square root of 4? 2. But what do we know from last unit? Plus or minus. 
plus or minus. Mm -hmm. Some of you might have chose a different way. You might have done a minus four. Some of you might have done that, which is great. And then you would um, difference of squares with a plus or a minus two. Okay, um, so let's separate this. 10 theta could equal 2, or 10 theta could equal negative 2. So you're going to be doing how many answers do you think? At the very, how many very final uh, angle answers are you going to have? Four. Four. Okay, so where is 10 positive? Where is 10 negative? So you're going to have an answer in every quadrant. If you have these on different pictures, that's fine, but... <laughs> 10 inverse 2. So 63.4 degrees. So 63.4 degrees is the reference. So you're going to have to go into every quadrant that amount. So four answers. So 63.4 is the first quadrant. The second quadrant, you're going to have to go 180 minus, 180 plus, and 360 minus. See if you can get all four answers here. Okay, ask yourself if your math makes sense. 296.6, yeah, that makes sense that it's in that quadrant, right? Because this has to be between 270 and 360. <clears throat> Have you noticed that 90 and 270 are never, ever, ever involved with this, right? Don't use this. You're always using the x-axis. All right, last one, I think, right? Oh, yeah. The next ones amp it up another notch, so we'll just do this as our last one. Okay, what do you want to do to algebra first? Isolate, so minus 7. Algebra, done. Activate trig mode. Okay, this is weird. What is zero, positive or negative? Yes. It's neither. <laughs> I'm tricking you. Okay, so if it's not positive, it can't be there. And it's not negative, so it can't be there. So where must I be if I'm not inside any quadrants? I'm on some kind of line. What? I'm on some kind of line. Okay. So, I don't know. I'm either 0, 90, 180, 270, or 360. Something's got to be my answer. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you kind of two ways. If you want, you can just start testing. 
So like, what's the sine of zero? What's the sine of 90? You know what I mean? Like that, you can just start trying the, because you only have five numbers to try. Or, I can look at my unit circle. Do we have zeros on here? Yeah. Zero is sign for which letter, the X or the Y? Where is Y zero? At here and here. So I actually have three answers. Because what's this? Zero or 360 or. So zero works. 180 will work. <laughs> and 360 will also work. <laughs> okay, so here's like a test. If you were just somebody testing the numbers, sine of 360, does it work? Yep, yeah, it equals zero. Okay, but I wanted to do that one with you because understanding zero means you're somewhere on one of the quadrant lines. You're not actually inside the quadrants. 